morning, everybody. Good morning. Check out my small mouse. It's a small mouse. The rack is gone. There's no more rack. It went to uh, the Tiny Corp office. And while we wait for some people to get in here, we are going to order Dunkin' Donuts. We're gonna get a nice ass, you know, a cold brew, man. We're gonna get a, we're gonna get a cold brew. I switched also. I'm now a full-time Android user. I use my folding phone here. Uh, I love this phone. It's a uh, Z Fold 5. Whatever you do, do not buy a OnePlus Open, piece of shit. But you can buy a Z Fold 5, and it's a... Uh, I miss iMessage, but otherwise there's nothing I miss from my phone. Um, so we're gonna order some Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, let's get a classic donut over here. Vanilla cream, powdered, old fashioned glazed, blueberry, chocolate frosted. I want a vanilla frosted. Can I get a vanilla frosted? Strawberry frosted with sprinkles. All right, we'll settle. I want chocolate frosted. Ugh. Glazed chocolate, Boston cream. All right, all right, vanilla cream. Now that sounds like a lot of work. All right, we'll settle for a strawberry frosted with sprinkles. What do you think? Strawberry frosted with sprinkles. Uh, and what we really want is a large ass fucking cold brew. Let's go. Where is it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Large cold brew with some, some whole milk. Thank you. Uh, ordered before. I'm not ordering a sausage, egg, and cheese because they taste like chemicals. And the donuts taste like chemicals too, but you know, we'll order a bagel. Okay, when does my food get here? Where's my food at? No, I don't know. I don't want any Landini's Pizzeria. Add 338 to save with Uber One. No, we can't make that happen. We can't buy more Dunkin' Donuts. All right. Uh, show up at my house. Uh, Strawberry frost with sprinkles, large cold brew, toasted bagel. All right, let's go. I uh, love this. Love this phone. Love this. 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 It's so large. It's a large folding phone. Um. I've also been reading a great book lately. Uh, so we'll do some. We'll do this. Uh, this is this is hot recommends. Uh, it's called a brief history of intelligence. Um, like two thirds of the way through, it's uh, it, it's really it's really well done. Just talking about the tracing the roots of biological intelligence and comparing it to ML stuff. Um, you know, we're closer than we think. So that is cool. Uh, yeah, we got a cold brew and a donut coming. Uh, oh, let's turn some lights on. I got, these lights are a little colder. I got a new bulb and for some reason it has a different color temperature. So hopefully everyone's cool with that. If you're not cool with that, you can write a letter to George's stream sucks ass at gmail.com and no one's going to respond to you, but you can feel better. And that's the point of customer service anyway, right? Oh man, it's hella bright. Okay. Um, Putting some weight on, what do I look, do I look fat? <laughs> uh, it's the lighting, yeah, probably. Uh, I didn't get nominated for the streamer awards. All right, what's up? Um, What else? Oh, yes. Yes, the other thing that if you guys have not seen Skibbity Toilet, this is this is the most revolutionary television show I've seen. But before you think it's just toilet humor, it's it's a deep story about a war between two groups of people. Look, it's famous, guys. It's famous. So, 
Uh, it, it, check out, check out Skibbity Toilet. Uh, no, I swear to you guys, it's famous. Like, this isn't some obscure bullshit. Look, this random remix Astro Toilet Killed DJ has 4 million views. Um, nah, Generation Alpha, man. We're skipping right over the Zoomers. I don't know what Slender Man is. They always talk about Slender Man. Never heard of the guy. But Skibbity Toilet, I don't know what's up. Um... <laughs> All right, all right. Uh, skibbity toilet. Uh, it's not gonna be a long stream today. I got, I got things to do uh, later today, so we're not gonna stream that long. Uh, if you came here for a long stream. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, but it won't be uh, long. Oh, the oh, what happened after last week's stream with the cash bug? Uh, yeah, I'll show you what I ended up doing. So I finished this. I ended up doing. Uh, I wrote these, I found this magic thing, hip stream right value 32 and hip stream weight value 32. Uh, whatever that is, it happens to synchronize the cache. So it turned out to not be that big of a deal after I went through a whole lot of various junk. Like you can actually allocate uncached things. So I added support for that. Um, Yeah, no, the uh, the cart went to the tiny corp. Um, no, skibbity toilet, man. All right. Uh, so what are we doing today? These lights make me look fat, guys. I it's 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 like a it's bright. Uh, it's light white. Am I still a Christian? Yeah, man. Christian forever, man. Christian till we die. Uh, Alright, wait. So, why am I listening to you? You guys aren't subscribers. I'm going to turn on subscriber only chat. Uh, this light's too bright. I agree. Right, we don't need lights. No lights. No lights. Oh, I also got a new keyboard coming today. I bought the I bought the hybrid Type S Happy Hacker keyboard. So uh, we'll see. Maybe that'll uh, arrive during stream. Okay. So we have this thing called the linearizer, and it's confusing and impossible to read. Maybe we'll just start by creating linearizer two. So the linearizer is called from device in here. Linearizer, it does some optimizations, blah, 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 blah. And then you linearize, and this is only if beam search is on. Without beam search, this just returns K and then you linearize. And then it has an AST and name and UOPS. So I don't know, let's just try linearizer too. Class linearizer. And we'll get into what the linearizer is uh, as we work. So we can sort of just a simple test here, just some addition. And we'll just do a forward only pass. Test add actually runs three kernels. That, that's a crazy amount of kernels. I just want something that runs one kernel. Okay. 
has to add three runs, one kernel, but it adds three things together. So maybe that's fine. Okay, cool. Uh, so you can see it's doing three copies in, and then it's actually running the kernel. Uh, if we run with debug equals four, we can have it actually print the, uh, the code. This is the code that actually runs here. Oh, it's, wow, it includes that in every kernel, even if I'm not using whammy. Okay, we need to fix that. Um, and then with debug equals five, you can see it print the uops. And the uops actually are the output of the linearizer. Uh, so we can do like graph uops equals one. And then should print where it saved things to uh, net uops SVG. Okay. So no, the linearizer turns uh, this, which is a lazy op, into these things called uops. So you can see this is add three, it's adding three things together. It's loading here from data one and data two. Uh, it then adds them, it loads from data three, it also adds that one, and then it, uh, it stores the uh, output. This here computes the address. You can see the same address is used for all four things. So it's using the global index and it's using the local index. Um, you can see that also reflected here. That's what this three means, and that's what that 975 means. Uh, yeah. So, what does a new linearizer look like? We can first take in the two parameters that it has, which are lazy op and ops. boring boilerplate Python and let's go over to device and instead of importing linearizer down here we'll import from linearizer 2. Okay linearizer has no attribute required optimization so it calls a function on here called required optimization we'll just make that fake uh, apply tensor cores of course, they're not supported. So the linearizer right now is conflating a whole bunch of functions, and that's annoying. It's conflating basically this, this optimization with, uh, with the linearization. And the new linearizer is going to deconflate these ideas. Uh, linearizer object has no attribute hand coded optimization, so we're going to need that one as well. So these optimizations probably should not exist on the linearizer at all, and then linearize is the magic function that actually does things. You now it's going to bitch and be like, I know you don't have uops or a name. Okay, well, our name can be Billy because you can just name everything Billy, that's fine. Uh, now we need uops, okay. Um, so we can do a first an empty uops. Uh, oh, we need to do global size and local size. Wow, this thing actually does a lot. Um, yeah, so this also gets the global size and local size for the kernels. And that, of course, doesn't work. The kernel is named Billy, but Billy is just empty because the uops are empty. So this is actually the code lives here. Um, and we'll get to what uops are in a minute. So um, the first thing that we have to do is uh, top of sort. So 
I have a function here called print tree. Um, I'm not going to do any debug. I'm just going to run that. Um, it just fails. But we can call print tree on the AST. And this is the AST. Load, load, add. So right now, the linearizer is, this is open source, you can read it, it's called TinyGrad. If you don't know what TinyGrad is, you haven't been watching this stream very long. Um, and it's uh, convoluted garbage. This thing is called kernel. It really doesn't have anything to do with, well, it kind of has to do with kernels, but this is mostly where the optimizations live. You can do all sorts of optimizations on the kernels, but there really are two types of optimizations. There's optimizations that affect shape trackers, and then there's optimizations like group for reduce, which are changing the uh, which are changing the actual structure of the uh, of the of the ops. So the thing that I want to change is instead of this convoluted stuff, let's first linearize these ops. And by linearize, okay. So what linearization actually means is these ops exist in a graph. We can see that graph with graph equals one. Uh, not u ops, but if I just get rid of u ops here, we can look at the graph. Okay, so this is the graph. Um, it does some synchronization, some copies, but don't worry about any of that. The important thing here is add. Uh, and actually, I need to fix. There should be one more thing in here that's just not there. Um, it's the thing with the fish. The fish. So this is. Uh, Add, you can see that this one has a dashed line because it's being fused in with this operation. And this operation actually has a, uh, a kernel. Uh, so kernel one, two, three, four. If we run this with debug equals two, we can actually see those kernels. So one, two, three, four. But of course the Billy kernel is broken right now because we're not actually respecting what's supposed to be in it. And what's supposed to be in it is these adds and loads. So first thing we have to do is write a topological sort. Now, I think I've already written this 37 times, so let's find the best one we can copy. So lazy.py is what's responsible for generating um, these things. These are called lazy ops, uh, and we need, to, we need to linearize it. Might just be this stupid. Here we can bring up the type definition here of a lazy op. Um, turn list lazy op. I love types. Types are so nice. Uh, okay. If AST.source, I don't even need to. Uh, linearize lazy op, AST, just call it x, uh, for x in, so I want to do flatten. For x in dot source plus x. Okay, cool. It should just kind of work. Let's see if this works. I can say something like for O and Ops print O. Let's see what it does. Can only concatenate list, not lazy octet list. Well, yeah, we can do that. Okay, seems pretty good, I think. Does look like a lot of 
things. Um, you know what? Let's just print. The problem is we're recursively printing this stuff, and it's kind of confusing looking. So let's just print the up. Okay, so we're doing two loads and add, a load and add, and a store. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, so those are the. Does everyone understand why that represents add three? Does anyone pay any attention to anything I say? Does everyone understand this? You can actually follow this. Unless you're an absolute idiot, you can actually follow this, right? So, good, 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 good. Um, so we're adding three tensors together that are 45 by 65. Where's my food at? Hmm. We're on stream, Alex. It's okay, you're always welcome on stream, but I just want to warn you. Yeah, well, if you're not stream appropriate, then then it's not time, then you shouldn't be on stream. Bro, bro, this is the greatest phone ever, bros. Okay, except that I don't have iMessage anymore. It's the greatest phone ever. All right, look. So it prints the ops, load, load, add, load, add, store. Uh, now we need to turn those ops into uops. So if you remember what the uops are supposed to look like for this, they look like this. Oh, this is so much work, boys. This is legitimately so much work. I don't know if we can do this. Wow, the linearizer are so good. The linearizer does so much. Like it has to transform like that into this. That's so much work. Uh, I can just throw the old linearizer back in for a minute just so we can see what it should actually look like. Wow, the linearizer does so much. Can it be decomposed anymore? A per D type linearizer? No. Wow, the linearizer is actually great code. Never mind. Like this is how I this is how I feel whenever I want to like rewrite stuff in TinyGrad. I'm like, oh, it'll be so easy. I'll just I'll just rewrite it and it'll be like simple. But it's never simple. And Let's also print the uh, let's print the argument. So we can see the mem buffers being created. Okay, so there's a whole other thing that needs to basically manage the shape trackers. The shape trackers are where those shapes come from. That determines how we're going to index into this garbage.
And the idea is always to simplify things, but whether we're actually going to simplify things, that's an open question. So, yeah, I mean, we have to convert. The ads are really easy. This is so much work. Then sometime these things get upcasted to float four. Oh, look at my cold brew app. Gonna be here soon okay well at least that's happening yeah that topo sorts just to be the linearizer does so much Gonna be, this is weeks of work. Never mind. I thought we were going to make some progress on this on stream. There's just no way. Like, this is some of the densest, most garbage code in Tiny Grad. This is the last thing in Tiny Grad that, like, hasn't been refactored to, to be a modern style. Lazy is pretty good, except for this. This is, this is the only junk left in Lazy. But otherwise, like, all of this is really tight. Uh, ML ops super tight, tensors tight. Uh, realizes realize is pretty tight. I added some new crap in to deal with synchronization stuff. There's some minor cleanups to do there. Um, JIT's pretty tight, though this stuff can be replaced when you have a memory scheduler. Uh, a graph is super tight. Uh, the shape stuff is kind of eh. Um, the runtimes are quite good now. The renderers are pretty good. Uh, search is kind of meh. Multi is the new hotness. Multi's pretty good. Um, the last thing in Tiny Grad that's kind of crappy is the linearizer. And why is the linearizer crappy? Okay, does everyone understand what the linearizer does? Does everyone understand the difference between this and this? So this is actually the code for, for kernel four. but in like a style that can be rendered in, in C. What is a linearizer? Well, so you can actually run graphs on processors. Uh, you need to convert it into a linear list of code. So th there's an order uh, which machines actually do things and that's what the linearizer kind of decides on. But see, then there's all this like cute little subtlety here, which is like, do you want to do the loads and then an ad and then another load? Or do you want to do all three loads and then both ads? No, no, that's not right. The, the UOPs operate on scalars and the lazy ops operate on vectors is, is the simplest way to think about it. Um, but currently we don't do any linearization of the lazy ops. So when you have a when you have a graph, when you have a, an AST, um, okay, does anyone know what an AST is? I'm gonna go to, is this, is this Compilers 101? Where's my, where's my call group? support hell yeah I mean okay so the the top of sword is obviously not unique um, 
So here, we can clean this up a little. What I really want to do is for, so lazy ops have inputs uh, called source. So we can say like uh, ops.index x for x in us dot source and then we can enumerate that and then we can print that there we go so you see this has source zero and one this has source two and three but these ones without sources could technically all go at the top this has source four does this stuff make sense to people Um, I don't know what you want me to draw on the whiteboard. Right? Like, I don't know what you want me to draw on the whiteboard that you can't see in this graph. So the, the idea of the new linearizer is to first transform, uh, like to first transform the ops into a line and then to deal with rendering the ops. But what are you here for? It's not here yet. You have to give Brian a moment to drop off your order. You'll get an alert when it's there. This thing just lies to me all the time though. I feel like like Um, does the order of operations affect performance? Sometimes, but again, I'm not even worried about performance, I'm worried about correctness. So one of the reasons that the linearizer has to be rewritten is I wanna support kernels that can store more than one thing. Right now, a kernel and a lazy op is defined to only have one output, um, but often you don't want this. Often you want to make like a, think about the topology difference between one, two, center two and one two center one right so so usually they have one output and multiple inputs um is that my food oh great it's here You can DoorDash Narcan? That's actually pretty useful. All right, let's see how sad this bagel looks. Very sad. Mm, it's like chemical. So there's like two parts of this whole thing. Maybe TVM has a smart way of thinking about this. So you see these buffer loads, they have this shape tracker. It's because the buffer has a shape. And then one of the things you have to deal with is how you want to, how you want to assign, uh, like, maybe a way to say it is what order you want to iterate over the, the buffers. 
so you can see here that this is assigned to a global ID and a local ID. If that's a local ID, that's a global ID. They all go into the loads. Sometimes it makes loops. So here, I'll show you what it looks like if we uh, if we use Clang. So this is a GPU. So GPUs have global IDs and local IDs. But if I use something like Clang, um, yeah. So you can see it looks different. So it's just a loop. To 2925, which is 45 times 65. Um, does this stuff make sense to people? I mean, half of the reason I'm doing this stream today is to explain to everyone like how this thing works. Maybe we should read up on some real compiler terminology. How do compilers work? This does not look very good. Well, there's probably a much quicker way than the n squared concatenation of lists I'm doing. <coughs> um, we also didn't do depth first. Our thing is a bit more breadth first. Does, does Chris, Lat Chris Latner, are you, are you out there right now? Someone, someone DM him, see if he wants to come explain this shit to me. <laughs> um, yeah, so the linearizer is conflating a bunch of concerns. All I'm thinking about is a skibbity toilet song, guys. And this one isn't even upcasting to float four. Which is another fancy thing the linearizer can do. No, that's actually not that complicated. That that's the UOP architecture makes it a lot easier to upcast things now. So we have a whole bunch of different colored dimensions that I talk about in kernel. There's eight chunks of the shape. Global dims, local dims, reduce local dims, reduce late upcasted dims, reduce loops, reduce upcasted normal upcasted dimensions. Wouldn't a shape be like a type? I mean, yeah. So, um, like in a way, tiny guy is like dependently typed. Um, I mean, yeah, a shape is a type. That, that's fine. 
but that doesn't help you. Maybe TVM might have some good docs on this. Sorry, this has turned into a research stream, you know? Um, I worked for, I worked for Optimism and uh, I Carl quoted my, my, my thing. I'm like, you know, how do you write, how do you write, how do you write uh, code? Well, first you think about what you want to write and then you write it. But you got to do the thinking about what you want to write part because if you just write it, it's, it's not, uh, it's not very good. So let's see if we can find where this is in TVM. TVM has thought about a lot of this stuff pretty well. Do I still have my TVM example in here? Does TVM run on my Mac? Install TVM. There's no way that works. Hmm. Apache TVM, right? See, right here, this is why Tiny Grad's winning. This is why Tiny Grad wins. Oh, it's gonna take seven years to clone. Yeah, but we have to learn how to code better. We can't just throw things at the wall and see what sticks anymore. Okay. Using the low level TVM API direct. The example is vector addition, which is covered in detail in working with operations using tensor expressions. find two placeholder tensors, blah, 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 blah. I mean, I'm having it at create a default schedule. So they call, they call this scheduling, which is interesting because we call scheduling something else. I mean, okay, so I guess we have a thing in Tiny Red called scheduling, but it's like one level higher than this. Oh, thank you for cloning the world. Parallel. So we have similar concepts to this, but they're called different things. Um, the best way to look at them here is our opt ops.
Why doesn't this work? Precedence. And it felt a little bit annoying. So I said, hey, let me just go back and see what I can do about the precedence situation. <coughs> can I do it what I said was the first best way? And can I do it as cleanly as possible? And can I really understand it clearly? Because part of the problem is Part of the reason I didn't do it that way in the first place, way back when I started the compiler, was I would go read some of these references, and they're like really hard to understand, and you know I don't exactly see how this oh relates God. to what I'm really trying to do and all this. And we'll we'll go through some of those references. But the point being, um, last week I think it was Saturday, one week ago today, uh, I just rewrote the way precedence works in the parser. Um, and oh, got rid of all the tree rewriting, and it uh, it works great. Oh, my computer's getting warm now. Okay. I think this is not the same thing. So they're talking about like um, like operator precedence, like multiply takes precedence over add. Um, I'm not worried about that. Python actually deals with all that for me. PEMDAS? Is that like PEBCAC? Oh, not that. I remember that. Okay. But I mean, this is good. Uh, TBM is really good at helping me like think about how to structure these things. Um, the guy who wrote TBM is also the guy who wrote MXNet. I'm also less worried about reading things now. Okay, so this is a cooler way, I think, to talk about it. I, I, I wanna copy this. They can bind axes to GPU variables. In TinyGrad, it's kind of implicit. TinyGrad needs documentation like this? Well, you know, chop, chop. Okay, now what the hell do I do? Of course that doesn't work. Python package is located at TVM Python. Okay, Do you want to write uh, tiny grad documentation that looks like this? Yeah, now we can play with the schedules. Great. Yeah, 
So the, the source is less interesting than just the lower thing here. Here. CSE var two. Who knows what CSE stands for? No, that, that's not what it stands for. Do any non-subscribers know? So I used to be more worried about reading other documentation because it would like pollute my way of thinking about it. <clears throat> Computer science and engineering, coma separated values. Are, are you kidding? You think you're gonna write the documentation? Come on. There has to be someone in here who knows what CSE stands for. Otherwise, common sub-expression elimination. Thank you. So it's interesting. It looks like they do this all at kind of like a Python level. What does bed mass stand for? I don't know about that. But, all right, all right. Donuts are not bad for you. I don't know who said that. Now you get subscriber only. Donuts are great food. Right place CTFs, coffee and donuts, man. You know what's bad for you? Not thinking. So let's try these schedule things. TE create schedule. Let's see. S dot C um, dot. Oh, I have to split. Oh, this is cool. Only vectorize the end. Let's try a four vectorization. Huh. <coughs> oh, T dot broadcast. Oh, that's cool. So does everyone kind of see what this did? That was like parallelized. Does that do anything? Oh, okay. I, I, I mean, I like, in some ways they do this much better. They like assign axes to bind. You know, it's so interesting that they can. Like, what if I change that to A? No, oh, it's not a part of the schedule. Okay. See, and then it looks like a convoluted mess. What's TVM? 
Uh, TVM has... So TVM's a competing library to TinyGrad. Um, I feel it has some very good... Uh, things are well thought through in it. I, I, I did some examples and like that's why how I ended up rewriting the whole schedule API in TinyGrad. The schedule API now is really good. Um, schedule takes your TVM, I believe, calls it relay. Schedule takes your entire uh, huge graph of a neural net and decides how to break it into uh, kernels or separate functions that run on the GPU. It handles like uh, fusion and stuff. And then the linearizer handles what they call scheduling. We have we also have a search thing as well <coughs> that searches over our uh, our space. Do I have a Jira board? What the hell is a Jira board? I've never used Jira in my life. I heard that it makes companies terrible. When people talk about what they hate, Jira commonly comes up. So why would I want that? You no, know, like Jira, I kind of think, I mean, there's something to be said for some sort of project management. But I think that a lot of project management exists because, like, Um, almost, it almost, it's, a lot of it's like make work. Like, it, it, if you can't keep the schedule of a project basically in your head, then your project is, like, too complex. It, it, it's interesting. Like, I, I do wonder a, a lot about, you, you look at some of these things, and they are insanely complex for something that's actually quite simple to express had someone really thought about it. But once you put something into JIRA, it becomes, well, thing, All right? Now we have a team and now we're gonna have a thing. And now we're gonna have 100,000 lines of code where we should have had 10. But well, there's all the JIRA tickets and I can drag them from here to here. Um, so no, we don't use JIRA. Uh, we don't use project management. We use people. You, 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 have, you have people and you have hierarchy. And if you have that, you shouldn't need project management. I mean, you, those people individually can decide how they want to, uh, how they want to parcel work out, when they want deadlines in, and they individually can use project management. But this idea of a project management that exceeds the scope of the individual Again, yes, if you are a large corporation and you, I don't know, you end up at a different point in the optimization space. If you put the project management software and the people below it versus the people above it, and like each individual has their own, uh, you know, project management. Uh, so no, we don't have a Jira board. Yeah, I mean, you can watch out for the metrics you want to track, but I, I think the whole, let's, I, I've never really looked. What is a Jira board? Let's look at some pictures. Yeah, it's like this kind of crap. Yeah, oh, burn downs and tickets. I, I've seen people develop software using these and it's like, they, they end up with software that, like so many of the things just shouldn't be things. And when you add software to manage complexity, you're going to get more complexity. I hope that's intuitive. If you, if you, as your ability to deal with complexity increases, you're going to get more complexity. 
Um, the, the problem is you're not often factoring in the long-term costs of that complexity. Yeah, you get you get work signaling. Look, I can drag them into approved or in review or whatever. Uh, I don't know. Like at Tiny Corp, um, we write on the board what we're going to do this. We kind of do half the things. Does the board really help aside from the list in your head? Maybe a little bit. Um, again, it's also it's not the tools that are bad, right? A, a properly managed board is definitely better than having nothing. But what, in general, I've seen these things do is let a lot of mediocre people think that they're doing something, and they're really not. And you end up with bloat and complexity. So yeah, uh, no, Tiny Grad does not have anything like that. Because it's, it's not about, very often, like, if, if the, the ideas in Tiny Grad are expressed pretty well, but someone smarter than me could express them even better. So we're just looking for what the absolute cleanest expression of these ideas is. And some of the places express the ideas in like, I think almost, you know, you know the idea of the book? Right, proofs from the book. The book is where God keeps the most elegant proof of each mathematical theorem. I want to I write. I want to write the deep learning library from the book. Um, what are Scrum and Agile? You guys, you guys like love this stuff. Yeah, like we have sprints at comma. They turned out to be kind of useless. Like we have them. Supposedly every two weeks, people like put in what their sprint goals are. I, I haven't seen this stuff be like useful. What's agile? Uh, incremental iterative approach to delivering a project throughout its life cycle. Oh, as contrasted to like waterfall. Yeah, I, I, I don't know, there are ceremonies and grooming. Yeah, sounds like some pedo shit, bro. Um, like, I, I guess, I guess these things can kind of help with some, like, so you can't get more work out of people. Uh, you, you can only basically decide prioritization. You can decide what's a high priority and what's a low priority. You're never gonna be able to get more done. Maybe these things help you make decisions like when something's a sunk cost better. I'm trying to think of what like the goal of all this stuff is. Um, you know, often, often companies struggle with like, okay, when do we actually cut a project? When do we, you know, I expected this to take two weeks, we're six weeks in and it doesn't look like it's gonna be done. I don't know, I, I think also this stuff kind of works for, if I had to build like the app for the Obama campaign, sure, this is, this is the kind of methodology you wanna use, right? If you're building something that's been tread over a million times before and you're practically below the API line, uh, but if you're above the API line, if you're, if you're trying to like, make something new. I don't think this stuff works. Uh, I've I, I started to come around to think that Com is going to be Tesla and self-driving cars. And I mean, Tesla's making a lot of mistakes right now. They are not focused on like adding value tomorrow. I hear, I hear autopilot's terrible now with all the wheel nags. Like, you know, we, we, we focused on stuff like navigation, the Taco Bell drive. Honestly, it was all probably pretty dumb. What we should have focused on is how do we make something on the highway that just never makes mistakes? Like, why does it make mistakes? Fix the mistakes.
Am I serious? What is this? What is this YouTube link? Uh, oh, am I serious that we're going to be Tesla? Yeah. Yeah, I'm serious that we're going to be Tesla. Um, I mean, again, uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't see them. Am I serious that V12 is bad? Well, what V12 is, I mean, comma ship this for lateral. We haven't shipped it for longitudinal yet, but what V12 is, is they moved the uh, planner into the back end and then trained the neural network on the planner. Like we call it NLP and, and, uh, and comma stuff. It, it, it's not a solution. Um, who can't remember conversations of two weeks ago it can help maintain shared context. Yeah, maybe the the alternative the alternative uh, like statement of that is saying maybe you don't want to remember the shared context. Maybe rehaving the conversations allows for a refinement uh, that just putting the stuff down on a board wouldn't. It's a trade off. Uh, I'm not saying that the trade off of not using it is right. I'm saying that. By using it, I hope you understand what you're trading off, and it seems like a lot of people don't. All right, so I don't know how we ended up on this crap, uh, but if someone wants to write documentation that looks like this, I'd be very happy. Um, it doesn't even have to be like 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 official. Uh, documentation, just some like tiny grad tutorials that dive into the, the low level stuff. You'll learn a lot doing it too. <coughs> so they bind things to axes. It's probably a smarter way to do it. A lot of these systems are designed around when the project fails, who do we blame? Yeah, who the fuck cares, man? Like if, if, if that's if that's where your company is, you have way deeper problems. Like, I don't know. I, I, you know, it was so it was so confusing to me. Uh, first, you know, I was gonna work for Elon to make autopilot. I had two meetings with him, and. The thing about Elon and Elon's companies is you have kind of a hierarchy of competence. Like, you can talk to Elon about anything, and he may not know the low-level details of everything, but that doesn't really matter. He understands everything at enough of a level that he can say, okay, we're going to like do this or not do this, or this is a bad idea, and then he can point you to the person, and like as you go down the hierarchy, you fill in the details. Um, it seems like other corporations don't work this way. It's very confusing to me uh, how they do work, if they work at all. Maybe we've just put ourselves into a, a completely dysfunctional place uh, where, where you don't have the people at the top really understanding anything. You think they have some like other generic skill called management. And everything I've tried to read about management shows that it doesn't exist. There is no such thing. There is no generic such skill as management. The concept of a non-technical project manager makes no sense at all. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know how we all like fell for this. Maybe it harkens back to a world where you could have like, where this stuff was understandable. If you're if you're like building a building, a normal person can understand. Well, you're going to have to build the bottom floor before you build the fifth floor. We can figure out maybe like what day we're going to be on which floor, and a normal person can figure that out. But when you get into software development, a normal person has no conception of what the first floor is and what the fifth floor is. In fact, a lot of software engineers don't really understand this. It's just it's just a much more nebulous, maybe a much more like. Uh, it's, it's, it's a much newer field. We, we don't really have very good science for talking about how to build software. Um, 
all the project managers I had stopped programming. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't like, I, I guess you don't necessarily have to be programming every day, but you have to be like a better programmer than the people you manage. If you're not a better programmer than the people you manage, how do you manage them? Or it, maybe not even a better programmer. If you're not capable of doing the work of the people you manage, how do you possibly manage them? I don't get that. And this isn't the kind of thing where, sure, you know, look, I've managed some people who are faster than me, who can get things done faster than me, but whatever it is they're doing, I can do it. And the idea of a non-technical like program manager, it's like you could give this person this task and they will never, ever be able to do it. So why should they manage it? Yeah, you have senior engineers lead. And there, there definitely is a, a, a difference in... Something interesting I get, uh, I get asked a lot is like, you know, does Kama hire junior engineers? Or do, do, would TinyGrad hire junior engineers? And the answer is, of course we would. Absolutely. I'm happy to hire junior engineers, but you may not understand what junior engineer means. Um, everyone I've met who's like in their early 20s, it can't really write software well. Like I couldn't write software well. No one can really write software well in their early 20s. But, and they're junior engineers. But they're junior engineers who will become senior engineers. They're junior engineers who their limitations are not their knowledge about computers, their knowledge about algorithms. In general, most of these people have like better knowledge about computers and algorithms than uh, people more senior. And those are the kind of junior engineers I would hire, right? Being a junior engineer doesn't mean that you're gonna get an education in any like concrete subject. Being a junior engineer just means that, well, you know, you haven't understood why types are important yet. <laughs> you will understand why types are important once you grow your own code base to thousands of lines and are like, oh, okay, I can't keep track of this anymore. Or understanding why commenting is good or understanding why you need to factorize things nicely or understanding why testing is important. You, you just, you need to like learn these lessons the hard way and you only learn these lessons through 10 years of experience software engineering. Uh, but that doesn't mean that like a junior engineer is not an excuse to not know things. Junior engineer is just not an, like, it's an excuse to not have like applied something and learned a whole set of lessons the hard way. Um, so yeah, and th this is generally why why, uh, you know, it's the junior engineer who's like, well, I could rewrite that in a week. And uh, you know what, they probably can. And those are the exact junior engineers I would hire. And you have a certain enthusiasm. And then it's the more senior engineer who's like, well, you know what, I believe you could rewrite it in a week. But you know, here are the edge cases that you're gonna run into. And here's what it's gonna take to maintain this. And even though it's more annoying, you're probably gonna wanna use this now because it'll pay dividends in the future, blah, 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 blah. Um, You had a smart technical PM who also micromanaged. What do you mean by micromanaged? What do you call micromanagement? I guess this is, this is kind of related to the stream. Wanting to control the code you wrote? Well, what do you mean by control? Type inference, what do you mean by that? Uh, Yeah, I think so. I mean, it doesn't really do it at compile time. I'm not sure, I'm not sure C Python does. You can use like MyPyC and it'll do that. Uh, well, no, I mean, type hints aren't type inference. I don't think it actually does anything like inference. I think it just, it does, has like a, like a specializing JIT. 
So so if, if a jet... No, it doesn't even have a jet, actually. No, I don't know. Maybe Python just doesn't have anything like this. So, so normally jets will um, specialize... You know, if it sees a function called like five times at the same types, it'll specialize to those types. And then if it gets hit with a different type, it'll like, you know, recompile with those types. Um, a junior engineer is going to be useful though? Yes, very much so. Uh, but the, the problem is like junior engineer is not, I mean, I'll use IQ, right? Like junior engineer is not 110 IQ, right? You know, it's just it's 110 IQ, you're probably not going to really be a great programmer. Uh, wow, 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 that's so taboo. How could you possibly say that? Well, it's just true. Um, junior engineer is, is, is 140 IQ, but you know, again, you haven't had years of experience learning a set of lessons that, that again, you can teach them and you can say them, but until you've struggled with them yourself, you never, you never really internalize them. It's not even necessarily an age thing, right? You could imagine somebody gets into programming at 35. You know, they did some other, they did like, you know, physics experiments for the first, for the first, uh, you know, 15 years of their career. Yeah, I mean, they're going to be a junior engineer, but they still may end up being very good. So it's not really an age thing. It's an experience thing. But it's not an intelligent thing. You will, intelligence thing. You will not become more intelligent. Uh, you will, yeah, learn lessons the hard way. You know, I feel bad. I feel bad for the people who aren't like told this, who who aren't. I don't know. I mean, maybe people figure it out, but I can remember a few people who just retaking classes multiple times, thinking that it would eventually like click. But if you're just, if you don't get certain things, if you don't understand certain ways of thinking, you kind of never will. A genius who happens to like software engineering very often is a is a is a junior engineer. All right, I don't know how did we end up on this? How did we end up on this stupid tangent? We always end up on this stupid tangent. Why do you guys love this stuff so much? You don't agree with what? You're overestimating the average in of junior engineers. What's that? Oh, the average IQ of junior engineers? I mean, what do you mean? Uh, again, there's the ones I hire and there's the ones I wouldn't hire. I, the, the ones I would hire are the people who, I did uh, competition programming in college and it's interesting how some of the best people at this stuff were high schoolers. Like seniors in high school who just had just learned all this stuff and just remembered it and could just like apply the algorithm. They were the best at it. Um, and those are the kind of junior engineers who I want to hire. They're not software engineers. And it will take them quite a while to become software engineers. But, you know, at a good sort of place, that's where you, that's where you learn this kind of stuff. I, I learned, like, I learned the stuff. I mean, Google really taught me how to be like a software engineer. You know, again, I, I still have... Uh, I still have a lot to learn too. It's not. Uh, well, yeah, because okay, I understand why most IQ things get moderated because like people go off on like the stupidest tangents about it. Um, well, there is also like there is also like two kinds of almost personality types. Um, 
and there's things that I'm not good at because of it. There's like, I'm kind of like a spam programmer. Like you see me just like try things a lot. I've been trying to change this, but it's hard to try to change. And then there's the type who works very slowly, but does a very good job with everything they do, has thought through all the edge cases. And yeah, um, you know, those people are, uh, you don't get as much total output out of them, but they're a very valuable addition to any team because you can put them on a project. The project will take four times longer than it might take with another person, but you're more confident it won't be wrong. procrastinating doing this. So the linearizer basically needs to be separated into two things, the, the code gen and the scheduler. Um, it seems like TVM does a good job of separating these things. So they have this function create schedule and then they have this function lower. And then lower, lower is like this is, this is uops. This is renderer. It's still not exactly UOPS. Maybe it is. Oh, maybe it is. No, it was UOPS. Yeah, yeah, this is UOPS, yeah. projects they learned a lot from like this is for TVM oh You need to add support for the DSP. confusing. I found all, I found a lot of these to be very complex, seemingly needlessly so. I mean, they aren't fast, 
you know, a, a lot of this, um, Chris Latner had a, had, a, had a take on Tiny Grad, which is like, you know, George doesn't really know about compilers. Um, and this is true. I, I don't. But in, in many ways, the problem is much simpler than being a compiler. The, you're, you're very limited in the kinds of programs that can be expressed in Tiny Grad. And because of this, you don't need a lot of the very fancy stuff that compilers do. Um, and like, even when I end up, I, there's a function here called uOptimizer. There's a, there's a, well, uh, like fixed loop scope and stuff. Like this is probably at the wrong level and it's probably because I didn't think through the stuff correctly. I think if I think through the stuff correctly at the right level, I don't have to do this. And I can do these optimizations at a higher level, which often when you're dealing with turn complete code, you can't. All right, all right, all right, all right. On topic, on topic. You always end up with the same stupid ass crap, man. Same like circle jerk. Why do you click around? Why do I keep my APM alive? I'm curious what What do they call their thing that we call schedule? I mean, they might just call it schedule. They might actually break things apart at the schedule level. On topic, on topic, or we're gonna ban everybody from chat. To T, uh, relay. Relay is a functional language and intermediate representation for neural networks. Relay applies graph level optimization passes to optimize the model. So in TinyGrad, that's in lazy, and the scheduler is all down here. After applying a high-level optimization, Relay runs fuse op paths to partition the model into many small subgraphs and lowers the subgraphs to TE representation. Okay, so we call that scheduling. And we don't have tensor expression as a language. We have lazy op. Uh, lazy op isn't actually flexible enough. We have to translate, we have to turn it into list lazy op in order to deal with uh, kernels that have multiple outputs. Okay, search for the best schedule using the auto tuning module. Oh, yeah, I hate that what we call schedule is not what they call schedule. Common operators, their templates are already provided in Topi. We have a big junk function called hand coded optimizations that basically does this. Like here we handle Matt Vex stuff, grouping. This is stupid. This, this is another. Um, so TVM looks awesome until you, well, you saw me build TVM, um, which was annoying. And then the code that TVM outputs is very verbose. TVM is, is tiny grad if 
you wanted to increase the lines by a lot. It's also not all in Python. Um, they also do a bunch of things that I wouldn't do, like tensor operator inventory. So they TVM allows you to integrate things like CUDNN. And by doing that, you trade off a lot of the simplicity. So something TVM will never be able to do is like what we do for multi. It's a long bet. Leafy, you're gonna get banned, Leafy. You're gonna get banned. Loop transformations, inline, and vectorization, we call these actions scheduling primitives. So we call them opt-ops. And they're in kernel. Unroll, opcast, no locals, opcast mid, group top. They apply on axes as well, but I guess their stuff applies on axes too. What actually are outer and inner? Useless. Search-based optimizations to handle the initial tier function generation problem. Our TVM we expect to expand the learning-based transformations into more areas. Is TVM still being developed? Oh, it's like PR is as many lines as tiny grad. So that's where the scheduling happens. I mean, TVM is an awesome project. They were also going to uh, build a, like, they have a lot of the same ideas as Tiny Grad. Um, eventually, I want to build this too. Like, you build a, uh, a tensor accelerator that's designed to work well with whatever your intermediate representations are.
transformations of computation that transforms the loop of computations in the program. And then I guess we have to write that first. So, yeah, I mean, Tiny God's really gotten out of control with this junk. Like, a flat ops is fine, but like group for reduce. I mean, group for reduce should not be something that exists in the kernel. Group for reduce should change the structure of the lazy op. Should change the structure of the lazy op to basically include a local buffer and a barrier. Uh, and should be applied before we do the linearization. Then like the other concept is how we flatten the axes. So like the, the shape tracker stuff should all be dealt with again before we linearize. Linearizer needs to be broken up into two things. What TVM calls a scheduler, we need a name for it. Um, we need a name for it. Does anyone have ideas? Because we can't call it schedule because we already have schedule. Like schedule is actually included in, uh, I don't think it's in tensor. But yeah, like you call this schedule here and that schedules the, uh, the kernels. Now linearizer is called lower. Lower is a pretty generic term. Agenda. <laughs> uh, what does the schedule part do? Our schedule does basically the same thing that there's relay. their relay does. Uh, it breaks it into multiple kernels, but I think that schedule is way more like, like appropriate there. Do I have simple mode on? I do. What does their scheduler do? Uh, well, their scheduler is like what we call opt-ops. Um, it turns ops into uops. It, it makes these graphs out of the other kind of graph. Like like assigner is the right word. I feel like when I get the name, no, op chopper. I like the thinking, but I don't know about the op chopper. <laughs> Anything that's clever is always bad. Like I want the most descriptive name for what this thing is. It's it's just almost like a like it's a mapper. Like it maps uh, high level like tensors to low level operations. Split, tile, fuse, reorder, bind, compute at. I don't have anything that looks like that. Are they pure functions? Yeah, everything's a pure function. The mapper. Graph rewriter. I It's like a term from Yeah. It's not ex 
exactly what it is. Like I've seen like graph like graph rewrite rules are like this is the core of like MLIR operation handler. All right, we're gonna take a five minute break. Five minute break. Everybody think about that, and uh, let me know what you come up with. We'll leave you on graph rewriter.
All right, boys, look where it came. HHKB Professional Hybrid. We can we can let the non-subscribers talk about the uh, the keyboard. I didn't really like that it has batteries. Ooh, ooh, them some nice ass keys, boy. But I don't like that it has this like battery back. Oh, really? I gotta put double A's in this shit? I got some double A's. I don't like the double A's though. I'm not happy about the whole double A situation here. Like, why couldn't it have a rechargeable battery? HHKB Professional Hybrid. By the way, I cleaned my keyboards. If you follow me on Instagram, you can see when I cleaned my keyboards. The best name I could come up with was Blueprint. Should we switch? Is this one connected to? That's plugged in. Ooh. The old one, the new one with some Type S Topre switches. No, it, it can't go any higher. The wire's in the way. With some Type S Topre switches, man. Let's see how it sounds. Ooh, you can't even hear it. Wait, except, no, okay, we have to flip. Does this one have dip switches? Yeah, we have dip switches. Okay, we're gonna have to flip some dip switches. We have to flip the dip switches on this one to match this one. Let me see what my dip switches on this one say. Switch two is flipped up. Assuming they mean the same thing or the same number of switches, we'll flip switch two up. Okay, switch two is on. Let's see if it now behaves how I expect. We can also connect this one over Bluetooth, but I don't trust things that don't have wires except this mouse. Ooh, yeah, ooh, that's nice. Oh, boys, it's quiet. Wait, this is the nicest keyboard I've ever used. Okay, listen to the difference. Ooh. Wait, this is the nicest keyboard I've ever used. Does anyone want to buy HHKB2s? I think we're upgrading. This is so nice. This one has to go to work though, so it can be quiet. Wow, well, this feels amazing. And who said overpriced keyboards don't matter? Oh, this is the nicest keyboard I've ever used, boys. Yes, I understand that I spent $300 on it, 350 or something, but like, whatever, man, whatever. Oh, yeah. Oh, how nice is that sound? This is gonna change my streams. Wow. It's as easy to type on as an HHKB, but it's quiet. Oh. Wait, I, I just, I love this keyboard. I don't like that it has AA batteries and Bluetooth, which I don't trust because it's wireless and I don't trust things that don't have wires, but wow. What am I gonna do with my HHKB2? 
feel so loud and antiquated now. I wish they sponsored me. I would, you know how many of these keyboards I probably sold? I mean, you can still hear it, it's just different. No, double AAs are not as convenient as a lithium polymer battery inside of it that just charges that I never have to think about. No, I'm going traveling over the next month and I wanted to take a keyboard I could bring with me. It's a little too big to fit in my bag, but it might be worth it because it's so nice. Nope, can't have the name of the keyboard. If you didn't pay attention, you can't know it. Oh, I get rid of this terribly ugly wire. This thing plugged into. Into the monitor? This wire is terrible. Bring this guy bring it around here. Am I going to? Finding glory, boys. Okay. Wow, that's mad nice. Okay. Um, so the best name I could come up with was Blueprint. Do we like it? Someone makes a noise, it's just different. Oh, the camera's off? No, it's not. Oh, I mean like that. What? Does that not go down more? Okay, it doesn't go down more, great. I don't know. I don't actually know how I feel about it. I take back all the nice things I said. I miss my old keyboard. I'm off center now. Are you happy? Extract the shape trackers. Put them in the blueprint, and that's where we do the transformations. Do we like blueprint? What do we think? Page is really good. Okay. 
Could still look pretty aggressive, pretty aggressive W. Exec planner or flattener or director. No, I like blueprint. But it's not exactly the TVM schedule because it means multiple different things. Uh, lazy op plus blueprint yields you ups. Why, why does it add those spaces? What is this? Fully a Mac only issue. There is a setting to insert periods in double spaces in the system preferences keyboard. What? Then it requires a fucking restart. NS automatic period substitution? Whatever. Didn't require a restart. Great. Glad it was some one-liner Mac garbage. Uh, do we like the new sound? What do you think? So some of the old linearizer. It's okay. When is that feature ever useful? You prefer the old? Well, that sucks, because get used to the new. The future is new. I don't like double A's. This keyboard would be perfect if it didn't have this big battery back with double A batteries. Tell them I'll pay an extra $100 if they put in a $7 rechargeable battery. It's heavier too. Again, we're not doing that again. I'm trying to do less cocaine this year. Proof, proof, Doug George does cocaine, man. <laughs> uh, I've decided in 2024 we're just going to lean into whatever drugs you think I'm on. No, I don't want to fuck you up. Someone on the stream called me fat, and I'm taking it very seriously. I don't know, some guy on the stream said I was fat. Well, that's not even the point. The point is... Oh, wait. Yeah, that's actually it. That is that is actually it. You guys think I'm fat because I'm wearing a big hoodie. Oh, that's actually reasonable. Here we go. Post physique, boys. Post physique. Thank you. Well, I can't eat because Chad called me fat, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the shirt off. No, we're not up to that yet. We're not up to that. No, we, we're going with light color shirts. We're going shopping later today. We're putting a big hoodie on. They give you the stone for free because you're a woman. No wonder women can't do capitalism. City. 
Alex would love it if we got a hot tub. They said it's going to turn into a hot tub stream, and I said Alex would love it if we got a hot tub. Grouping. This changes the lazy ops structure. Wow, I have to relearn how to type on this keyboard, though. It is different. Okay, so we're combining these things into a single opt op, but we do like shift shape two and opcast. Let's get at the fundamental. Oh, I wish Tiny Grad had docs and I could like show you guys what these things are. Does anyone know? Does anyone know what these things are? Either global or reduce. I forget. Do I make sure in tensor or in lazy that like think so. Do I reorder them somewhere? Where does it happen if I do like a, like an outer sum? Sorry, it's not making any sense. If I have two axes and I sum the first one, where do I reorder them? I might do this in tensor. I might do this in ML ops, or I just might not do this anywhere. I might do it in linearizer. I do it in linearizer. Wow, this keyboard makes me think quieter too. Oh, here it is. Okay, remove all reduce access to the end. They don't actually have to be moved to the end. I mean, that would be a big change in the way of thinking about it if we didn't move them to the end. All right, subscriber only chat. Please stay on topic. Ugh, this is like this is one of the worst parts of Tiny Grad to think about because it's it's conflating so many different things. So we have output shape and full shape. Do we want to keep these things? Because these are also things that can change. 
And this gets into the whole spec of what lazy ops are allowed. We have all this fancy stuff which does float four. We, we can do that also as a UOP optimization, but I'm not sure if it's preferable to put these things as UOP optimizations or non-UOP optimizations. Buffer, const buffer, local buffer. Well, then there can also be local buffers, and local buffers are a whole different thing. So, mem buffers are backed by memory, but local buffers exist only in one instantiation of the kernel. Like, local buffers can exist inside of loops. Okay, maybe I should write out an example for people. If this makes sense. So if we're doing like a reduce, if we're doing like a matrix multiply, right? So the output of the matrix multiply is one, two, four, one, two, four, one. And then the inputs are one, two, four, one, two, four, one, two, four, one, two, four, one, two, four. And then it's like A times B dot sum equals, you know, that, right? So does that make sense? Like those are the shapes. Now these are actually expanded and like this axis and this axis have stride zero, but that's not really important. Um, so yeah, then you can imagine like const buffers too. So there's really, there's really two shapes here. Like output shape equals one, two, four, one, two, four, one. Full shape equals one, two, four, one, two, four, one, two, four. Wow, I love this. It's just so pleasant to do that. Keep my APM high. Um, okay. And then we can do things like, let's say we want to like do an example like uh, unroll. So this is this is an inner loop here, but we can like unroll the loop to something like this. Bye. And that works out the same, but then those will be loaded as uh, as special things. Now, usually you want to also do upcast. So we could do like an upcast of like axis equals zero. And upcast is going to do this. The problem is like right now I'm making assumptions about how I assign the axes. Like, so then this axis here is global. This axis is uh, up. This axis is global. This axis is reduce. 
and this axis is uh, is up as well. Does that make sense? Do these transformations make sense? So this is all like as part of the blueprint. And then usually what you want to do is you also do something like local. So I mean, let's just give an alternative. Say we like local axis equals zero and we can go like 32 up, right? So if we want to go 32 up, what's one or two four divided by 32? It's 32. So if we're like going local, it becomes this. This is like global, local, but like it's also kind of cool to have like a canonical order of the dimensions. Reduce up. So like right now we enforce global, local, uh, group, reduce up. Uh, unroll. Okay, so this is not actually upcasted. This is actually unrolled. Uh, the difference between upcast and an unrolled is whether it exists in a in a reduce, which is just basically just loop unrolling. It's the same thing as loop unrolling. You don't have to. Uh, yeah, it's just like loop unrolling and reordering, kind of. So yeah, I mean, there's a question of, do we always want to keep them in sorted order? Probably yes. Now I should also think about what group is. Group's the most confusing one there. Group's the only one I haven't explained yet. Um, so yeah, maybe group is kind of the wrong. So I'll, I'll talk. I'll talk about what group is. Let's say we're doing a full reduce example. We just have like one axis, and it's like let's say one, two, four. Okay, we're doing a full reduce. So you might want to group that and do like. So I mean, I can I can just split that to 32, 32, and then I can do like, have 32 threads do that reduce and then have like a final thread. But that requires like a local of that size, which is an intermediate. Does that stuff make any sense? Um, maybe I can show you one and that'll make sense. Let's enable the real linearizer. So that one's being grouped. See this 256? That's a group. You can see more if we increase the debug. So you see it's actually doing two loops here. Um, it creates a local with that dimension. So maybe, maybe that's the example we'll steal.
we split that into 256, 64, but actually the local has that size. And see, it does the first reduce in that loop there, and then it does the second reduce in a loop there, but only if uh, the local IDX is correct. I can think of a more generic way to express that. Well, okay, so it is a local dimension. Like that definitely is a local dimension of 256. This thing doesn't have any global because it's a full reduce. So I put group there, which is after local. But the difference between group and... Hmm. Now our dog strings suck. Comments are... Comments, I think, are mostly overrated. Um, who's distracting me? You want to write comments? Go write comments. Go write comments and make them useful. You know, the best thing is write documentation. The second best thing is no documentation. And the worst thing is wrong documentation. And very frequently, you get wrong documentation. So I split, I get that. We're definitely putting, yeah, we're definitely putting the groups after the locals. But it's interesting that they actually are locals. I don't know. I mean, groups kind of annoying. Like, look, look at, look at how much that's like changed it. See, we, we want to rewrite this as basically this. So that's not the shape. Well, okay, I mean, that is the shape because it didn't resize it yet. But that becomes 256, 64. This sum takes it down to, is this a loop over 64? Yeah, so the sum takes it down to here. But then we actually do a store in a local buffer. Yeah, I mean, groups really are more like reduces. So that's why they go in this order. Uh, Strats can be one comma zero. And then we have something that sums it down to one one. And then we have something that stores it here. Uh, all shape one has strat zero. So yeah, I mean, that's what we want. exactly right because then we have to also do a load from local buffer right and there's something like barrier here and also this is kind of inverted I mean we can just write it like that first we load some store local barrier load local some so like we can rewrite this in the lazy op that's what I'm talking about about grouping Just, so that's like an intermediate shape. 
just somewhere between Barrier is kind of implicit there. I'm trying to think of how that'll appear as a tree structure. Stores don't usually have any output, but we can give it output. That's the barrier. And it keeps the graph structure. So that loop is also interesting. Like this has a global dimension of 256, but that load happens without that being a group dimension. It becomes a reduce. So I have the stuff that handles this in the old linearizer. Like a lot of what I'm talking about here, you can read in the old linearizer. It's just like terribly written. If you look for group for reduce. I don't know, I don't care about Ekramata right now. Uh, basically, if you want to join Ekramata, like, Come up with a plan that you actually want to go live there for a week. I'll text you the address. Like, I don't know. It's just no one's serious about that. And they end up wanting, like, basically a manager. They want to be given structure. And I don't have time to give people structure. Like, I don't care enough. I, I kind of give people structure for this project. But even that, you spend a lot of time giving people structure. And you don't always get that much out of it. And that's the classic, like. Well, I can do it myself, but then it doesn't scale, blah, 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 blah. We're back on management garbage. You might be experienced. I don't actually think that's the problem. Um, so I'm so happy that someone finally applied to Hammer for the one job I wanted. Uh, so if you notice, there was a lot of people tried to apply to Hammer, and there is only one uh, job that we were actually seeking, which was Founder. Um, and fortunately, you know, uh, you can go try Hammer right now on uh, Perplexity. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 take, I take zero credit for it. I'm not, I'm not like saying that. I'm just saying like I want this to exist. You know what I mean? So the, the same problem comes in with, with Ekramata. And I don't know which email is yours specifically, but I got a bunch of emails about it. Um, you know, again, I can rate them on a spectrum of clownishness. But the real problem is it's my fault and like I don't have the... I'm not like managing this right now. I'm not like putting a structure into place. I don't really like doing that. And like the land has so little upside. Um, like what, what's the actual upside to building that? You know, not, none. Uh, I'm waiting for the, I think what I really want is uh, Ekramata is gonna work. So. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not actually really hiring. Um, you can take over responsibility. I mean, okay, so no, no, it's an email. What do you actually want to do? You want to, you want to, you want to come out here and do what? You want to get paid, or you just want to live on the land, right? Uh, you want to get paid. How is going to be return, right? Um, uh, do I have time to actually vet if you are capable of doing this? Uh, do I? What happens if we get less return than you told me you were gonna get, right? It's just like a, oh, I gotta like deal with it. I gotta think through like the game theory and the incentives and all, oh, oh, you know? And then like the problem is, there's all this stuff that I don't like doing. And the problem is you deal with it for a plot of land that won't actually ever be anything, right? Like if I have so much time that I'm gonna put into this, why not put it into companies that are gonna be billion dollar companies maybe? 
Um, I'm not trying to hate on you again. Again, I'm talking structurally about why, uh, you know, Ekramad is not a real thing. Um, you know, it's just... Like... Uh, you start to... I, look, I'm sure you're great, and that's not even the problem. Right? The, the, the problem is... What do you think the limiting factor of growth on companies is? We can discuss all the terms. Like, this is what I mean. I'm not discussing, like, 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 if you come up with a proposal and the proposal, like, I got a guy living out there right now. You know what? Zero maintenance, right? It's, just, it's zero maintenance. And if that's what you want, then, you know, like, say, hey, I want a place to go chill for a week. We'll go get a beer and, like, you're welcome to go chill on the land. It doesn't cost me anything, right? But then when you're like, oh, well, you actually have to think this through and think about how this is going to be something and put a plan into place. And we're going to have one-on-one -on -one meetings every week. And we're going to have a fucking JIRA board, you know? Now we have a JIRA board. Is the land going to have a JIRA board? See, it's... Uh, uh, it's, it's as, as the... As the technology becomes more powerful, and maybe this is the shift we're seeing now. Um, make perplexity the CEO of Hammer. Uh, <laughs> oh, daily meetings and syncs. Like we just don't like we don't have any of this, right? We hired someone, so we have a. We have a, we have a uh, uh, I'm a full-time employee now, tiny grad. And like, the way that this works is like, you just got to be like chill and like, I'm not going to manage you, right? Like this isn't, there's not going to be, there's not going to be management. There's not going to be structure like that. Um, you know, and then, okay. So then you ask the question of, well, if you're not going to do management and structure, what's the point of joining the company? Why don't I start my own company? Well, then you're going to have to deal with all of this. And trust me, it's way worse and it's not worth it. Whatever you think you're going to get, you're not going to get it, right? Like starting a company is such a bad idea unless you really want, like if you put a big weight on making the thing exist, if you just want the thing to exist personally, that's the only reason you should ever start a company. Um, it's a terrible financial choice. It's a terrible just like, it's just a terrible life choice, but you can potentially make something exist that doesn't exist. And the problem with the land is it's not something that you're not going to make something new exist. It's something that basically already exists. And again, it, you know, it's on me for being wishy-washy about this, but I realized that I got to lie more and I got to lead people on more because that's what Elon and Sam Altman do. And they're more successful than me. Um, I mean, think about it. What limits growth of companies? What limits growth of anything? I think it's the same thing that limits growth of life. Look at how long it took life to go from prokaryotes to eukaryotes to multi-celled organisms. Well, yeah, like, you might be able to do those things. I don't know. What I should really just do is sell the land. Not to you. I'm just saying I should I should sell the land in general. I can get more than double what I paid for it and just be and just be out of the land in general. No, it's not capital plus demand. It's not. I, I it's not capital at all. I, people have been saying this on Twitter now. Like nobody is capital constrained. I, I could raise five hundred million dollars tomorrow if I had a way to deploy it. If I had a sane plan to deploy five hundred million dollars, I could have it tomorrow. The problem is how do you deploy five hundred million dollars? Uh, limit is the amount of belief that the owner has. I don't think it's uh, sure. I mean, you might have delusion at some point, right? Like, you, but you, all that's going to do, if you think the limit is the belief that the owner has, then you're going to get absolutely delusional people who own companies. 
And there's some delusional people who own companies, but most people who do it are not that delusional. Some are. Some are. The, the, the big ones that you, like, the, the big ones that blow up spectacularly uh, have, have completely delusional founders, and that's why we enjoy watching them. Right? That's why we enjoy watching the, the like, Theranoses of the world, because they do have delusional founders. But again, most startup founders are not delusional. Um, no, I don't think it's the amount of consumers or your product. What, what limits the actual, like, growth of the company? What if Kama hired 10 people tomorrow? I could get them desks, I could get them computers, I could sit them down, but then what exactly would they do? How well would they integrate into the system? And would they integrate into the system in a way that you're getting more out than you're putting in? And I think that's the limiting factor. I think that's why it took life so long to go from prokaryotes to eukaryotes to multicelled organisms. This, this being able to... Uh, work together and get these superlinear effects um because you need superlinear effects right if there were just linear effects everyone would work for themselves the only way companies can work is when you get there's a cool book about this called scale that like goes into who this this kind of stuff but it shifts with technology and i'm starting to wonder if well look at all the tech company layoffs maybe that's why it's happening um, the vision and dedication, again, what do those things mean, right? People can have delusion, delusional visions. I, I think it's more the practical factorization of the problem. And I think this is the limiting factor of growth. It's a limiting factor of, of it's, 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 it's the same problem in software. Like, how do we take this complex problem, say running a ResNet, and break it down into the correct appropriate parts? Right now we're, we're coming up with the linearizer, and the linearizer actually has three responsibilities, and we can break those three responsibilities into grouping, which is this, TVM schedule, which is this, and then TVM lower, which isn't here, but it's in the linearizer. It's the function called uop. I broke some of it out this morning into uops.py. Um, so being able to factorize the linearizer into three parts, and now I can sort of hire for three roles. Now I'm hiring a grouper, a scheduler, and a lower, and those three roles should be distinct enough that they all can work together and make more than the sum of their parts. Uh, but with many projects, I'm not sure so sure things scale like this. Like, like, imagine there was no way to factorize this, and you just needed to take the linearizer and make it better. Um, and then I think what, it's very easy to falsely factorize things. It's very easy to take something and split it up into four parts, like four separate things, when three of the things actually do nothing. But you can't really remove them because of how you structured the one. You can look at, you can look at a, lot of, a lot of code bases look like this. Right, read the WebKit code base. The WebKit code base has a wild amount of layers of abstraction, half of which can be removed, but nobody can remove them in practice. Uh, I don't think Tesla was delusional, right? Tesla may have had some delusions, Newton may have had some delusions, but fundamentally, when it came down to physics and AC motors and magnetism, like they had correct ideas that, that were not delusional. So it's often with these people, like, you know, you, you, you focus on, on the delusions of, of, of Steve Jobs or Elon Musk or all these people. But in reality, the, 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 the average decision, I have to remind myself this a lot of Twitter, the average decision that Elon makes is better than the average decision I make, obviously. These people are not delusional at all. These success, no one who's successful is delusional. You can't be. delusional about certain things you could be delusional about certain things that don't really matter but when it comes down to the things that actually matter uh you know i'm not I'm not going to give names to some people but i know some people who love having like these these wild delusional beliefs uh about about you know maybe, maybe i'm like this to some extent too like i have some things where you know i'm a finitist uh but 
when it comes down to actual practical things, I'll give you the boring answer. And that that's... You could be right for the wrong reasons. Yeah, you could get lucky. You could be a one-hit wonder. But again, the people who are successful are not usually like this. The limiting factor is the amount of times it takes to get systems actually put in place and working that can manage the throughput that they need to. I, I think so. I, um, I have this concept called management coefficient. And putting in people with high management coefficients, but even then it's like, it's not just how many people you can manage because somebody might think they can manage 20 people, but then their output is not 20x, right? Like you could just think about, okay, maybe even if it's sublinear, it still generally makes sense because it's super linear at some higher level. It's so interesting to think about this stuff. Um, but yeah, the structural problem with the land is just... You know, I might think that I want someone to come in and do this, but I don't even really have the management. It's not that I can't do it. It's that I, I don't see the uh, I don't see the payout. The the even if the land as a project succeeds uh, wildly, it's not a billion dollars. Not that I even care about a billion dollars, but it's it's not it's not on any. Pareto optimal thing. Uh, you don't see cults. You don't see compounds. It seems like everyone who tries at it, like, it's very easy to want to be a cult leader, but it's very hard today to find cult followers. Uh, you know, people think, like, like, you'll be able to get cult followers like if I actually did it if I actually set up a place and like you know through a lot of delusional show up to this thing it's an event whatever 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 you know dedicate your life to this yeah you just don't like have that you're not going to get people who actually do it today um certainly not people who are capable at all maybe you'll get some completely incapable people to show up but you'll get people who you don't have Curtis talks about like thymic energy. Like you're going to have people who just drain the thymic energy of the place. The place can't be self-sustaining. A capital is not the problem. Time is not the problem. Nothing is a problem. The only problem is to get people going. And that's why you need to have social skills. Hitler was a good example of it. I don't think that's true. Um, I don't think Hitler succeeded particularly because he had social skills. There were just some, there were some things latent, uh, like latent in, in, in German society at the time that Hitler was able to exploit. Uh, but you have to have those things latent in the society. Uh, was Hitler a but-for cause of, of, of World War II? I don't know. If it wasn't for Hitler, it might have been like there were five other guys who were thinking the same sort of stuff. Maybe he actually changed things. It's, it's hard to say. But definitely, you know, Hitler only managed to do what he did because he had a lot of people who were willing to follow him. And that's the thing that's much harder to find in the modern world today. Your, your uh, Robin Hansen, I was listening to Robin Hansen uh, talking about why the Amish shun technology. And it's not because technology is inherently bad. It's because technology exposes you to the outside world. Even something as dumb as a car. If you have a car, you're going to drive the car to people who aren't members of the Amish community. And you're going to be corrupted by their ideas. It's very hard today to build an insular sort of community like that. Um, yeah, something about like... You need, you need, in order for a cult to succeed, you need competent, willing followers. And you don't have that today. You're yet to see modern social media organize a large amount of people for a revolution. I'm not sure you can. I'm not sure. We're yet to see modern dating apps create more successful pairings. It's the same problem. The amount of choice on social media, the amount of choice on dating apps actually lowers the, the quality of the average relationship. Um, 
you're not going to get your 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 Instagram social media cult is not going to outcompete all the other Instagram social media cults. So you get these things that are like you get something like Black Lives Matter, which what do you have to do to say I'm a part of Black Lives Matter? Okay, I post the Instagram square and you know I go stand around and go to a block party. Cool. Like that's the amount of oh there's a word for this. There's a word for like that's the amount of like buy-in you can get. But if the buy-in actually required something more complicated, it'd be much harder to find people. I've heard that like organizations like the Muslim Brotherhood have very high buy-in. Like it takes a lot to become a member, uh, which you almost don't see in the Western world today. You don't see organizations where it's some five-year, ten-year process to, to become a member, to work your way up the ranks. You know, you see people who are like, oh, I'm going to go somewhere else in 18 months and blah, blah, blah. The world's a hedonistic paradise. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not so sure social media can can structurally organize a... a... No, I just... Ekramata just doesn't work. So... Here's a theory that might work. Um, it is possible. So there's the old, there's the old, like all the people who like tried these like hippie cults in the 60s. Oh, we're going to go live off the land. And uh, In general, everyone wanted to be the guy who sits around and smokes weed and philosophizes. No one wanted to be the guy who was out there with the hoe in the field. Uh, so the cults would collapse because... No one was out there holding the fields. It's possible that robotics will change this. I'm not sure, but I can see a world in which you can gain almost the thymic energy from the machines. Now, you're not going to be the only one with the machines, so the whole landscape might change enough that you can't still can't do it, but I, I could see a way things change. Allow me to give a couple speeches about comma, and I would gather you amazing uh, new people. Yeah, you can get poor, broken hippies to join your cult. It's actually even hard to get poor, broken hippies today. But um, you, you get, well, you'll get people who want to take and not give back. You, you'll get people who want to take way more than they give back. Won't people always be cheaper than robots? No. No, the cost of human labor go is going up. The cost of robotic labor is going down. They will eventually cross and they will eventually be nowhere near each other. You would gather me amazing new people. Okay, go on. Go on. Where exactly are we finding these amazing new people? Uh, you've got a couple of acres thinking of copying the model. It doesn't work. I mean, yeah, ro robots are the new are the new slaves like that, right? Like uh, people you have to pay for their time. It's it's <laughs> the 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 the, uh, the, um, the the kind of real politique view on slavery is uh Slave owners were sick of paying for their slaves' room and board, so we'll give them freedom and a job, right? That's, um, no, no, you know, pay for their own house, pay for their own food. Let let the let the capitalist system figure it out. It's something I don't have to deal with. The reason I can do that is because I love the project and have the ability to make people love it. Then why aren't we doing that already? All these people who, you know, that's what I really like about the bounty systems. Don't, like, we'll just judge you straight up for the task. There's no, there's no... Yeah, yeah. Well, cults can go mainstream too, sure. I mean, again, Burning Man, Burning Man, Burning Man works. 
Burning Man works, and you can look at what it is and how they did it, and it's pretty cool. Uh, it, it follows a structure where you're, you're definitely getting people who put more... Some people put way more into Burning Man than they get out of it. So, so Burning Man has done a good job with this sort of thymic energy. Um, I don't know if Father Yacht is Grateful Dead is banned. Uh, yeah, slave labor is less efficient than paid labor. That sounds right. So yeah, what, what are the uh, what are the scaling laws that that go into these things? How do you, we're going to be able to like measure this all? I don't know. Sometimes I wonder: Does anyone understand this, and I just don't? Does anyone understand this like sort of people dynamics? If people do understand it, is it just something they don't talk about because it's taboo? Uh, I think I think I, I've talked about this before, maybe not on stream, but like a, a studying of. of I, it, there was interesting stuff. There was interesting stuff in like the pickup world fifteen years ago talking about social dynamics. Now, now like the red pill stuff has gone too far. I think a lot of it's pretty misogynistic now um, in a way that it wasn't in the past. But like, if you can really approach this problem, not with prejudice, but asking the question, asking the true questions about what are people, how do they work together? What do social dynamics look like? I don't know. You do, I'm surprised how little there is on, on really understanding this. Um, no, one, no one fully understands. If, if there's any knowledge that they keep from you, it's that. As it scales, you lose fidelity in your systems. The first guy who gets good at whatever process is locked down, but as you copy him, yeah. Yeah, this is a, this is in Harry Potter and the Methods of Rationality. They talk about um, whether power in a system is increasing or power in a system is decreasing. Your manager was teaching you what? Uh, your manager was teaching you about social dynamics? I mean, there's like market dynamics. This stuff's pretty well understood. Um, I mean, the market dynamics stuff is well understood. It still doesn't mean it's predictable. What, what was he teaching you and where was he getting this stuff from? Well, market dynamics are well understood. Again, it doesn't mean that you can make money off of it. But the, the, the like, all these, you know, all the... All the, all the, all the, all the, crypto economics has, I think, done a better job articulating it than all the, than all the past stuff. Like, you can now, if you were around crypto at the right times, you just, like, oh, okay. I mean, I understand, like, like, I understand what the Fed does. <laughs> um, I understand, you know, how, how every Ponzi in every way, shape, or form, what's a Ponzi, what's not a Ponzi. Market dynamics are well understood. Again, that doesn't mean you can predict the peak of GameStop, but you can understand the causes and forces that lead to the GameStop phenomenon and the crash. You understand why there has to be a crash, but you understand why shorting tomorrow doesn't make you money. Um, yeah. Yeah, again, the future is predictable in so much as it's the same concept as, uh, you know, in poker, how often should you bluff? And you can work out mathematically exactly how often you should bluff in poker. And you may fully understand the Nash equilibrium of poker and still not be able to win against someone else playing the Nash equilibrium strategy. Or 
you know, anybody can fully understand the dynamics of rock, paper, scissors. It doesn't mean you can win at it. Um, now, there may be people who play rock, paper, scissors exploitably, and you may be able to exploit them. But two people playing the Nash equilibrium strategy of rock, paper, scissors will never exploit each other, which is just, you know, pick randomly. Um, everything ends up boiling down to the social dynamics and groups of people. Yeah, okay. But again, what are these? Are there books that are going to teach you this stuff? Because I, I, found, I found very little good stuff on the topic. And to think that it's maybe one of these sciences. Actually, the best stuff I have found about social dynamics of groups of people is economics. Like, if you, if you study economics, you can kind of... I don't know about any of this stuff. Ah, uh, look. Uh. So then there is, there's another, this is a Yukowski's book, Inadequate Equilibrium, which... Everybody from the outside can look at modern corporate culture, can look at like the DEI cult and say, yeah, that's not going to end well. But the market can remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent. Uh -huh. If the best thing we have to understand social dynamics is the Bible stories, wow, that science really has not progressed very much in a long time. Yeah, Stoicism, yeah, go read meditations. Like, yeah, I've read this stuff. I've read this stuff. I've read the Bible. Like, yes. This, this, is, this is the, like, like the understanding of social dynamics that everybody has. What I'm saying is, is there more of a modern scientific, uh, is there more of a modern scientific take in this stuff? Um, I think Robin Hanson has some of the best stuff on this. Well, yes, yes, it is, it is very notable that the modern social sciences are a complete sham. Um, again, I will take the modern social sciences seriously when they acknowledge that there are group uh, racial differences in intelligence, right? That is the greatest taboo. It is obviously true. Um, when, when they acknowledge group differences in intelligences, I will reconsider uh, the social sciences, but any person who does not acknowledge that is not a scientist, they're a propagandist, right? Again, separate from whether you like that fact or whether you dislike that fact, it's a true fact about the world and anybody who isn't, you know, purporting to report true facts about the world is not a scientist. Uh, People deny basic biological truths. Yeah, again, this is what I mean. Like, there is a certain tabooness to this sort of stuff today. Um, we come back to this a lot. This has been a common thing I've been thinking about. This has been a common topic on this stream. What can you change? What can't you change? Uh, how does change actually happen? There is some rationality people kind of talking about this. Again, I think the rationality people are too, not all of them. Maybe they've been kind of coming to the truth of it, but I think that like, Neo Reaction had a lot of good stuff on this too. These were people who were unconstrained by uh, social niceties and could talk honestly about this stuff. everyone denies basic biological truths. I do think you get, yeah, you get wrong people on both sides. You, you get people who get caught up on, in ideologies, right? Whether your ideology is blank slatism, or whether your ideology is white supremacy, uh, both of these ideologies are ridiculous. And both of them will, will cause you to, uh, you know, believe some, some, some very false things about the world, right? A, a lot of, a lot of modern, uh, like leftism is based on the idea of blank slateism. Um, blank slateism is that like, you know, 
equality, if you have true equality of opportunity, you will get equality of outcome. And that's just not true. Uh, and then like white supremacy is obviously based on the, well, we start with the core axiom that white people are supreme. And then we derive everything from that. Like if your core axiom is junk, then your, your uh, results are going to be junk. I would solve time travel if I had a thousand of me. Probably not. Uh, there are questions about how well me's would scale. Uh, I don't know. I don't think me's would scale to large organizations. Me's would probably scale pretty well to 10. 10 me's could probably work pretty effectively together. 10 me's could probably achieve 5x the output. 100 me's are going to come up with the idea of decimation. <laughs> no, not really. Not really. Hey, copies, I'm chilling with all of you. We're all going to coexist. You know, it's going to be like some big, like, gay orgy shit. Like, it's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it, man. Like, we've all seen it before. You know, it's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah, I like some of the cognitive behavioral therapy stuff. Uh... No, I don't think cloning myself would solve the world. I, I don't think that's true. I think you'd get stuck in, I don't know, I mean, you know, I'm a big fan of diversity. I think you'd get stuck quickly in, uh, in local maxima. And, you know, I think I'm better than a lot of people, but I'm not better than everybody. And I'm certainly not better than everybody at everything. Have you seen me play video games? Um, the value of sorting this out is so high it isn't publicized. It becomes tribal knowledge in the organizations. Yeah. I mean, I guess I'm, I'm trying to think of like what I would expect the structure of it to look like. Yeah, but I mean, different RNG seed in, in what space, right? If you're doing, if you're doing mixture of experts models, you want, you want diversity. And you want, you want like an extreme amount of diversity. You want as much diversity as you can get. It's, it's a, a, a non-performing expert will quickly be selected out by your final selection function. If it, but if it ever does ridiculously well at one task, it's like worthwhile. Which hots will become King Hots clone? Uh, well, Tesla and Einstein existed in a world of a large amount of diversity. Again, I don't mean diversity like like the modern corporate definition of it. I mean diversity in the sense of I'm not gonna say like intellectual diversity. That's like a taken word, but you know what I mean. Your Rick and Morty situation, right? Planet of Ricks. Um. Wait, what? All that stuff, bro. Like literally. No, see, this is the problem. Figure out how to get power out there. Figure out who you have to bribe at SGG and E and how we can get it done for as little as possible to get a electric wire run out there. Oh, oh, we'll just use fucking solar. See, that is why you're not serious. That right there is why you're not serious and you haven't thought about this enough. All right, solar sounds great. Oh, great, we can buy the solar system. We can put it up. Dude, I'll tell you what's gonna happen. Junkies, bro. Yeah, you live on solar, that's great. And you spend your whole life out there guarding it against junkies and it doesn't build value over time. I understand that you can build it, but this isn't the problem, right? This is the exact same problem. Look, see, this is what I mean. Like, who I want to hand this to is, and this is, then, you know, you start to think about this more and you start to understand why the world looks the way it does. You start to realize who I really want to hand this off to is like a corporate property developer, right? Why it fails in the junkies? Because the junkies come jack your fucking solar panels, man. They walk up there, they steal your solar panel, and then they're like, oh, we have a solar panel for sale. Do you want to buy it so I can buy heroin? Um, 
So yeah, I mean, the, the, the problem is not that you can't install solar. Um, the problem is solar doesn't build long-term equity. Um, like solar panels are a depreciating asset. Uh, solar panels require a ton more maintenance. But if I could get the land on grid power, the grid then will maintain it. And that builds equity on the land. Money that you would invest in solar could be leveraged a lot better, yes. All right. And this is, this, is, this is the junior engineer versus senior engineer mentality. Um, you think, oh, I could just write that. Oh, I could just make that work. Yes, but at what cost? Right? And like those things that you're talking about are so high level compared to, yeah, you can put the land on your grid. No, see, that's what, see, see but okay. You're misunderstanding what I want, right? And this is exactly why it's such a problem, right? I don't, the tractor, you can fix the tractor and the tractor will break again, right? I, I, you know, I want the kind of person who's like, I'm not going to do very much, but I'm going to slowly build equity and value and infrastructure over time. Um, the truth is, why would you probably even own a tractor? Uh, and then you get into like, the World Economic Forum has it right. I want to own nothing and eat the bugs and rent everything, right? You really do as an individual. 123 acres. Um, yeah, no, I mean, the kind of person, I, I, I like, yeah. It's not the kind of person, and I, I said it wrong, right? I wrote that at Gramado website a long time ago. It's not the kind of person who lives off grid. It's the kind of person who, look, I manage four fake wineries. We make most of our money off of weddings. I work with these three companies. Here's what it's gonna cost you. Here's a five-year projection of your returns. Like, that's what I want. I want the most like boring corporate event planner type to come in and they are the kind of person who will make the land, who will build equity in the land. Take the shit land, farm it, industrialize it, and corporatize it, and then can we figure out a deal where we all make money off of this, right? Like, I'm fine with, you build equity in the land, I'm fine with you taking all the profits while you're building equity in it. And that's kind of like, yeah, like I wanna be an investor in the land, not actually uh, like, a, like, a, like a manager in the land. Uh, the land is about 20 of the acres are flat. Uh, yeah, fake winery, right? Like this is what you do, right? Like, 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 like press a few grapes, whatever. Oh yeah, look, there's some grapevines down there. Yeah, we got a caterer we work with. Yeah, look, we got a, we got a all you can drink area over here, right? Like it's just, just you know, a destination wedding, man. You love, you love the woods, nature, the stars. There we go. Yeah, pay three hundred dollars a night for accommodations that are worse than a Motel Six. Hell yeah. Catalina wine mixer. Now we're talking, right? Like this is sorry, but like, yeah, buy cheap wine and pour it in the barrels. Yeah, we're gonna buy some Chinese Alibaba wine and we're gonna slap a California label on it. We're gonna spend more on the label than we spent on the wine, right? Like, come on, this like this is what this shit is. And if you don't do it like that, you just lose. You can try agriculture. Yeah, you know, go watch Clarkson's farm if you want to try agriculture. Like that shit's funny. They get the picture with the water with the sunset. Yeah, it's a beautiful lake you can see from it. Oh, it's really nice land. See, you hate that you understand it, but you don't want to do it. Exactly. Exactly. And this, hope everyone understands why none of the people who reached out by email are actually serious. And I don't think they really understand what a serious person would look like. I didn't understand it at first until I tried to do it for a bit. The serious person is like, George, look, I built three fake wineries before. Uh, you know, here's your projected revenue numbers. Uh, here's what it's gonna cost you. 
oh yeah, but I could do it, you know, I can, I can work on it and I can do it, I can do it for free and I can do that myself and I can save money. Yeah, maybe, maybe, but who knows, right? Like that's the whole, sure, you can rewrite the whole thing and it'll be better. Yeah, maybe. Welcome to being a senior engineer. Um, explosive range. <laughs> uh, no, probably the. So look, I got a, I got a guy working out there now. Um, again, it comes down to one of the best business, one of the best like low low entry businesses you could probably get into is horse boarding. Um, weddings and retreats are great, but it requires quite a bit of investment to get it there. Right? And again, you need the kind of person who kind of like event plannery person who's going to do it. You know, these women, they make good money. Like it's almost always women who do it or gay men. Um, they're just, you know, they're very good at this kind of attention to detail. So to make your wedding a memorable night you'll never forget. And a night that I got paid another $50,000. Sorry, I thought you wanted to make it a wholesome place for actual living people. Don't you have everything else to make money? Wrong. See, this is the wrong mentality. You will never succeed with the first mentality. The first mentality is commie shit. Right? And... The, the, the truth about commie shit is it doesn't work. You'll be living in the dirt while the thing to make money is like, all right, cool. We got grid power, uh, you know, the, 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 it's well water, but the well's cleaned up nicely. I installed this filtration system buried underground so the junkies can't get to it. Shit, maybe I even want grid water, you know? Like, can I get, can I get grid water? Explosive range, someone's gonna throw a grenade and like leave it and then someone's gonna be digging through the things and the grenade's gonna blow up and then I got a lawsuit. You know, you gotta think of the downside risk here. Um, we live in capitalism, but not, not only do we live in capitalism, capitalism is good. Capitalism is why we don't live in caves. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Good, it's good. Let's tell me take the unbreakable vow of not being evil, right? See, but like you won't make it a wholesome place for 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 like you, like 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 I I don't know how better to describe it. I don't know how better to describe it. From every time that I thought I could buck market trends, I can't. The amount of difficulty it is to swim upstream on anything. You better choose exactly what you're swimming upstream on and make that your entire dedication. Uh, and a good place to not swim upstream is on electrical power. Don't just connect to the grid like everybody else. Okay, so buy data center grade shipping container, stack tiny boxes in it, bury them underground, stack solar above ground. Why? Why don't I use a colo? Why don't I just stick them in an off the shelf colo? Do you really think you're gonna do it cheaper? Put a spreadsheet together. How does this compare with a colo? Like I've done way too many things in my life with comma, like we're like, oh, we're gonna like build our own one of these things. You just kind of mostly shouldn't. Yeah, this is what I mean. You want to convert 120 acres of mostly rocky land into an income source. Yeah, I know it's not an easy task, right? And then this comes into like why I'm like, well, fuck this, man. Like, what's the most income it's actually going to bring me? Let's build a fab out there. Wow, that sounds like, you know, again, <laughs> you know, like the, uh, the, 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 the hard water clogged up my $20 million lithography shit. And like, oh, I should have just built this in an office park. And then you understand why everything's in office parks. And you just start to understand why the world looks the way it does. You can go around thinking that everyone else is an idiot. And it's easy to think that because everyone you meet is an idiot. 
But yet somehow these systems contain so much more intelligence than you. And it's funny. It's like funny how that is. So it's not to say that nobody can do anything, but it's to like, don't try to reinvent everything. You're just not going to win. Uh, hire 100 engineers for Tiny Corp and name it Tiny Land. Then you charge dumb hype wannabe engineers to watch them and learn together. You can pull scams. So in general, what I'll call a scam is, yeah, I could probably like, like you could probably milk a lot of people for money um, by giving them education. Like there's a lot of demand for like education today, but I wouldn't feel ethically okay about it if I knew that the amount they were paying me is never what they were gonna make back. Um, yeah, like education, the, the returns on education are today, like you're making nothing back. It's, it's not worth it really at all uh, to go to college, to go to, yeah, to do any of that stuff. I did. I described four years, but I didn't describe four year four year degrees from nineteen forty. Uh, if you went to college in nineteen forty, your degree definitely had return on investment. It was cheaper, and both had a bigger return. Uh, but I mean, look, the market's finally catching up. Everyone's kind of understanding this about college. You know, men figured it out first. The women will the women will follow eventually, right? You look at colleges now, and they're what? They're like sixty five percent women. Well, you know, you'll see. You'll see. It's standard social dynamics. I think guys, guys figured it out kind of first. They're willing to take more risk. They're like, yeah, I don't need one of these as a ripoff. Uh, 2008, yeah, I mean, you, you might have still had a return in 2008. But uh, again, imagine you're at college and you're saying, oh, I just wanted to create a wholesome place for people to be educated. Yeah, you can't ignore economic reality. So to answer the kind of question of, do you want the master science that talks to you about social dynamics? The answer is economics. But you, school cost you 24K and you made 50K in your first job. Would, are you sure you wouldn't have gotten that job without school? And if it's 24K for four years, that's, that's just not that much money. If it's if it's if it's sixty k a year like these modern four year colleges, well, all right, now you got to make a hundred two hundred forty k, and that's 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 uh, usually loans that have interest, interest rates are high, so on and so forth. Oh, the line city! I'm excited about the line city. Uh, you can make the same parallel for poker. Well, no. I, 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 poker is a game where everyone consents to the rules. Right? I don't feel bad scamming people in poker. I don't feel bad, you know, scamming people in crypto. George scammed people with cheap ETH. Um, not scamming like that, but like I don't feel bad. Uh, look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy low, wait till it gets up, and then dump on people, right? Like fundamentally, that's a so Veronica Mars line. You, you don't, uh, you don't, you don't dump your stock. You sell it. Yeah, well, you know, sell it. I don't feel bad. Like everyone who opts into that system, everyone who opts into a system of buying and selling shit coins consents. Everyone who sits down at the poker table consents. Right? You consent to the fact that you're playing a game. And at that point, well, you know, hey, someone's got to win and someone's got to lose. And uh, I don't like losing. But uh, no, I mean, I, I don't feel that it's ethical to do for things like education because you're not really consenting to a game. You don't really have consent from people. No, I lost money on Meta. Don't talk to me about Meta. <laughs> uh, the land is the land is thirty minutes uh, from San Diego. It's very close. Uh, as far as using it as storage goes, yeah, you're gonna need a road, bro. Uh, the road is barely drivable for your average car. Uh, again, you're going to need grid power, you're going to need a security guard, you're going to need a fence. Ugh, I got to get a guy out there to build a fence. And 
You know, oh, who's going to manage the guy? He poured the concrete badly. Oh, the union labor's on strike. Oh, see, it's just like, like, yeah, there we go. Um, okay, so you paid, you paid 24K for somebody to keep you on track. Yeah, maybe, maybe 24K is, again, 24K for four years? That's not that bad. All right, you're not going to even get, you know, you're not going to even get cheap. But again, 60K a year, shit, I could pay a full-time, like, live-in, like, whatever. Um, uh, no, like, again, okay. You want to do solar, right? Stop thinking about putting two shitty solar panels out there. Start thinking about, can I actually make money off of this, off of this solar? Um, can I actually use the electricity right there, right? Can I do some kind of, um, sure, maybe you can, you know, maybe you can put a data center out there, but now I'm going to need fiber out there. Right? Maybe, maybe I can, I can build a colo. Maybe I can build a colo on 123 acres of land. Uh, no, but it gets hot out there in the summer. All right, this is a big thing. It's custom. Never mind, I give up. We'll let non-subscribers talk for a little bit, and then I think that's today's stream. Sorry, we didn't really write much code. We thought about it. We called it Blueprint. Realized that it's going to be a lot more work, and then we just talked about a lot of work. Uh, our batteries are from way down in price. There's this, like, people are, like, looking at, like, the S-curve of batteries, and it's just getting started. It's really cool. Shout out to Big Pump Signal. Um... Ten years. Streaming ten years. Sounds about right. Uh, I have nothing useful to add yet. You showed up and spelled useful wrong. Uncle Ted already tried Ekramata. Not really. He didn't scale it. He was, you know, he had very different. Kind of, you're like, you're a much more, uh, I don't know, much more pessimistic view on the future. I'm not that pessimistic about the future. I'm somewhere in the middle. Could go well, could go badly. Real social dynamics. Tyler Durden, yeah. Wait, the blueprint. Maybe that's why I was trying to think about it. Isn't that, didn't he, didn't he write like, like a thing called the blueprint? Um... Sell the land. All your considerations are already priced in. Exactly. Now that's some good advice. That's some good advice right there. That's the thing. The markets, whatever you're thinking, the market's already priced it in. The market is so much smarter than you. Bow down before the holy market. Um, yeah. It's so hard to beat the market. Maybe this is why everyone hates capitalism. You just feel like like there's this like this is super intelligent being out there. Did I rewrite the linearizer? No, I wrote some notes for the new linearizer and realized it's actually gonna be a two week project and has to be done slowly and boringly and you won't really wanna really see it on stream. Make a chip manufacturing plant. Uh, oh, the mirrors are not worth it. Photovoltaic solar is so cheap. Now photovoltaic solar and batteries have gotten really cheap in the last five years. Uh, so we're gonna start to see a lot more. Um, leasing it to a telco. Oh my God, what I'm gonna, at and is gonna give me a call. You ever try to talk to at and t is one of the worst companies in the world. Uh, no, I don't think clones of myself would ever be like a gay event planner. I mean, I don't think clones of myself would be gay. How, how far, how far, like, in the spectrum, how far would you have to, like, push me? Um, yeah, it's just like, it's, 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 I'm just not. I mean, it depends when these, like, clones started, right? If these clones were, like, I don't know, I mean, then, then you're just into the, uh, in the whatever, whatever identical twins have on correlations and, Gay for yourself, man. Everyone who jerks off is gay for themselves. Uh, would be five times more intelligence, way better than 10 clones, man. 
So like you're, you're asking the question, do you want 10 cores or do you want one core that's 5x faster? You want one core that's 5x faster. Um, the piano is just, just it's a showpiece, man. Like when I bring girls back here, I like I have a piano. No, no, I'm not going to play it. Make a tiny box factory? We're building a tiny box factory. We're building a tiny box factory right now. We're just not building it where there's no power and dirt everywhere. Where is the rig? This was junkie stole it, man. Junkies. What was the last stupid question? That's a stupid question. <sighs> Junkies in Princeton. <laughs> no, why, is, why is housing in California so expensive? Um, my aim's not money, okay? It, it, To deny capitalist reality is to deny reality. To not look at things through an economic lens is commie bullshit. Uh, this is just the kind of like, uh, this is something I wish I understood better when I was younger. You just, you get better as you get older, predicting how long things are actually gonna take, predicting what trends are, uh, going to look like you're young and broke how could i make some money real talk walk up to people and ask them for their wallet don't like mug them don't do anything illegal just be like stand there and be like sir can i have your wallet I'm like you know one in 20 will probably give it to you one in 20 maybe they'll be like well, like you can't have my credit cards but i'll give you the cash and there you go you made some money is that illegal just like it depends like you a big guy like maybe that works Uh, I was too sheltered. I don't think sheltered's the right word. I wasn't very sheltered. I wasn't very exposed to... You know, I was raised middle class. Like, I wasn't very exposed to kind of the, the upper class way of thinking. The people that still carry cash will probably also beat you up. That's true. There is... You know what? It's already priced in. Whatever it is, it's already priced in. <laughs> Um, Canadian theft, <laughs> just very politely. Uh, sir, can I, uh, can I have your wallet, sir? You want my wallet, eh? Commit fraud. Fraud is a good way to make money. It's priced in. It's priced in. Like, you don't understand. Stores have a budget for shoplifting. You could be that budget. We could be that mistake. We could be that mistake. What? No, 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 no. Ben Shapiro or Ben Shapiro Bro? Put out by Trump the Don. So there's some AI Spotify. It's actually pretty good. Um, wait, it, it's not actually Shapiro. There's like, like it's like Ben Shapiro bro. Shapiro bro. Trump the Don. Shapiro. It was like Shapir Bro. I saw it on Shapir Bro. No, I don't know. We're not listening to any real Ben Shapiro. Real Ben Shapiro. There's just, just 30 seconds of it. Just, just, we, we can watch a little more Skibbity Toilet, though. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. No, like, like, if you haven't watched Skibbity Toilet. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, AI Drake did put out some good songs. Better than anything Drake put out recently. That's some stimulating content, I know, right? What, Skibbity Toilet? Yo, Skibbity Toilet's super real. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll start you at the beginning so you can understand where it comes from. <laughs> Skibbity Toilet is worse than you think. It brainwashes children, man. The kids aren't okay. They got the ears messed up from the damn rap music. <laughs> <laughs> it's a psyop, bro. All right. Uh, Pal World? Oh, I don't know. Is it good? I haven't played it. Um, <laughs> Skip it. Use some Konami shit, bro. All right. This is a real. I don't know. Like, I work all week now, so I come and stream on Saturdays. Like, I, when I used to do streams on Tuesdays, I think we were a lot more focused and we did a lot more work. Um, we tried to do RL and we just got frustrated like every time we try to do RL. Um, Shapir bro in quotes. Oh, good, good, good. Good, let's see. Leftist tears. Oh, wait, we can't, we can't listen to it. Leftist tears. They have to put it on YouTube too. Oh, oh, he did a, oh, is this actually? All right. All right, gang. It's literally your boy, Ben Shapiro, bro. Wow, I didn't know that. And this rap right. is sponsored by Express VPN. Express VPN. Watch Daily Wire, not CNN. Sponsored by Express VPN. Literally, my first rap is better than Megan the Stallion. Shout out to Michael Knowles, Matt Walsh, homie, when it do. Candace Owens getting on my nerves, his family, she's a part of the crew. Destroying these woke college kids, not on Shabbat, shout out to the Jews. Yeah. Um, no, also, uh, Trump the Don. Uh, Trump the Don rap. Um, mm, here we go. Trump the Don. The back at it again, this time in the countryside. Shout out Jason Aldean, Morgan Wallen, and Dana White. I could have just retired in peace. I could have been golfing with my niece. I could have been chilling on the beach. But I got too much love for the streets. Hey, let's make America great. For every religion and race Yeah, men don't have a vagina The radical left works for China He did, he rhymed China and vagina, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty, uh... <laughs> um, uh, watch Daily Wire, not CNN, sponsored by ExpressVPN. <laughs> Uh, it is it is good vibes it is it is it is good vibes uh you know it's 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 funny you think like 10 years ago i remember like my president is black my lambo's blue and i'd be goddamned if my rims ain't too remember that it's like they were making like obama rap songs and now they're making like trump rap songs like it's just this is funny man it's just funny all right all right uh the name donald trump has been mentioned so that means it is the end of the stream thank you everybody for watching today uh i appreciate all of you uh, except for some of you who derail and uh, cause trouble. Uh, look, 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 uh, don't go to college, man. Look, I'm just saying, don't go to college. And whatever you do, don't let Sam Altman uh, scan your eyeballs. Good night, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, happy Saturday.